find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Oh, look, he's doing his Batman voice. Back off, Rand. Do not say a word about this to anyone. Today is August 5th, 2014, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk about everything movies from the week before. <laughs> well, actually, just everything movies for um, Guardians, right? From this weekend. That's all we're talking about today. That's basically it. I am in the studio with Mike Sorg. How's hey, it going? Ready to do this. Uh, I'm very excited for Guardians this past weekend, um, and, and excited to get into some conversation about it. Nice, nice. And we got Mad Mike. How's it going? Call me Star-Lord. Oh. Bitches! Wait, hold on. I got this new machine. I want to see how it works. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Oh, jeez. Jeez, jeez. And we got a special guest. How's it going, Dan? Hey, guys. I got my pelvic sorcery, and I'm ready to go. Nice, <laughs> nice. And of course, Dan... <laughs> Of course, Dan joining us from the comic book pit. Um, I got I got to confess, I know you did a spoiler free Guardians of the Galaxy review last week. Um, since mm-hmm. you saw it like last Tuesday, um, I did not watch because I wanted to go clean into this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, uh, fortunately, um, yeah, I, I work part time at a comic book store and we always get like a uh, just a bunch of passes for the uh, more geek centric movies. Uh, so I quickly snagged three of them as soon as they were available. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice, nice. And we'll get into that, yeah, of course. <laughs> what is playing in front of me here, Mike? Oh, there's, uh, there's just commercials. It's a new stream thing. Uh, so I hear there's a new Turtles out. A new Turtles uh, preview, commercial, trailer. That's what I was looking for. It's coming this week. <laughs> it's coming this week, right? Yeah. It went a whopping 2% up from 38% to 40 Oh, no. Oh, no. All good things <laughs> for mutants in green. What do you guys think of this? I mean, is this something that we should be Man, concerned with? I am, as you know. Do I need to bring out the sewer playset? Does this need to happen to show how big of a fan I am? You know, I recently bought Ninja Turtles Adventures comic books because I found them. Just my mother, my 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 birthdays and my Christmases are still full of my mother giving me Ninja Turtle clothing and items just because <laughs> you know because they are everywhere and she remembers. Um, I want this to work so much, but I do not think it's going to be anywhere close to the pure enjoyment that was Guardians this past weekend. I kind of feel like I need to like stand outside the theater to whatever movie you go to with just like a cupcake when you come out and like a hug. <laughs> Just like, I'm sorry. Just a turtle shaped cupcake and a hug. Here, your childhood is saved. Oh. And then you have Ninja Rap playing on your iPhone. Yeah. Just, just sue go them. Ninja, just sue ninja. them go after, ninja, after the horrible Wiz ninja, Khalifa go. song, you know? But I, it's like the slow jam version of Ninja Rap. <laughs> Vanilla Ice. Yeah. Slow jam and the Ninja Rap. It, it's, ice. Like, it's like, villains, you better run and hide. <laughs> day you might not find. Mm. Like, like that's what you, you need a slow jam version of ninja rap with vanilla ice still doing I'm, you know or, what i want to you, you go the you go the opposite way you get the rob van winkle hard metal version of it <laughs> he, he went like the metal rap mm-hmm. route where you're mm-hmm. just angry and you're just like <laughs> that, yeah, i gotta say out. man that was huge at the gathering of the juggalos that one year that was absolutely huge um <laughs> yeah i want to go clutching my ninja turtles 2 cassette with vanilla ice signed just like he's <laughs> Please, like rubbing it for good luck, you know, during this movie. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope, I really hope so. Please, please, please don't mess this up. Well, the the last trailer I saw of it, it looked a little better. Like, I think when I go see this movie, I'm going to just imagine that the CGI turtles are the Jim Henson puppets. <laughs> I, th- I think that's what I'm going to end up doing, and I'm just going to listen to the dialogue and see the action, because I don't like how the turtles look. I'm never going to like how those turtles look, but if they're accurate representations, 
of the turtles, then uh, that's halfway there. Then maybe. Well, let's let's look on. I don't I don't think there is a bright side. I will be spending money to go see this movie, right? Mm -hmm. But this is what it's going up against. Guardians this week pulled in a whopping ninety four million. Oh my God, the next was like twenty. Right? Yes. Like, not even 20. Lucy. Yeah, it was huge. Barely yeah. hit. Tw like, Lucy was just barely 18. And Thursday then, night, they made $11 million. Yeah. That's Thursday night before it's even technically released. Mm -hmm. That that was bigger than Cap 2. That's insane. I saw it twice, Mike. There, Me too. <laughs> there, is, there is no way Turtles is going to... I see turtles right around that 45, 50 million if they're lucky. I hope so. I hope so. Like, like I, uh, I can't see guardians doing, um, you know, guardians will be like around, let's say 60. I, I'm calling 60. Yeah. Cause I think everybody's, I feel like a lot of people are going to rewatch it. I think that's the kind of movie I want to go see it again. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's a, it's a word yeah. of a movie. It's I want to yeah. see it two or three more times. <laughs> it's, <laughs> that's really, cause it's, it, it was just so much fun. Um, but we'll get into that. Did, did any of you guys see in, see it in IMAX? No. no, I did. You should. I saw it. In, I saw it in 3D. How I, was I it? I saw in 3D? it in IMAX 3D. It looks magnificent. Yep. Magnificent. I felt like 3D would do it justice for this movie. Yeah, you know, yeah. I sitting there watching the 2D. You're just like, that's going to be a 3D moment. That's a 3D moment. That's a 3D <laughs> moment for sure. All right, let's mm -hmm. get into this. The non-spoiler. Okay. Well, well, hold on. Did did anyone else watch anything else this week? Maybe uh, something to do with a weather a weather pattern and amphibious <laughs> um, jaws. No, I did not. But I don't. I don't have cable. <laughs> how what? How how great was Sharknado two? Um, Sharknado two is fantastic. However, being a uh, a uh, native New Yorker, I only have two gripes with the movie. One of them, the city field is never that full on a game that doesn't matter. And two, <laughs> uh, the cabbie is not that good of a cabbie if he doesn't know that there's a Home Depot on 3rd Avenue. Other than that, movie was fantastic. You know, awesome. Tara Reid turning into Ash from Army of Darkness. You know, that's nice, all big. Nice, <laughs> nice. You know, I actually saw two movies this weekend. Um, I saw Kick-Ass 2. Nice. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Definitely not as good as the first one. No. Uh, Jim Carrey was awesome in it, although not as <laughs> awkward as the first one. Yes. Um, and I also saw yeah. the internship. Really good for an HBO. That's how I saw it movie. I actually really enjoyed it, but I'm still kind of on that Silicon Valley vibe, you yeah. know. So mm -hmm. it, I mean, like it was nothing mm -hmm. to make me like hate how they treated geeks in it, you know. So, but it was really kind of a Google commercial in the long run. So basically, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it was absolutely a Google commercial. I enjoyed it, though. <laughs> and the fact that I had yeah. the kid from Silicon Valley's in it, too, didn't help either. And it was a good cast. So, Okay, so about, now... Did I, did I mention I watched Expendables? The first one? The third one, the one that hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay. That's coming out in like two weeks, I right? I thought I mentioned it last week, yeah. But that that one's actually pretty good. I was I was pretty pleased by that. Okay, compared okay. to yeah. the other ones, um, although a lot of com a lot of people were saying number two was all right, but whatever. I don't remember what I watched. I know I went back and watched uh, Draft Day. I don't know why, but it gave me like a nice cozy <laughs> feeling. So I was like, football's about to start, sure. Uh, but besides that, I don't know. I I watched Avengers or not Avengers, uh, Guardians twice, and that's pretty much everything i've been thinking of so, <laughs> it's just enveloped yeah. your mind ever yeah. since yeah that's pretty much it like i'm still like man that was a good moment I mean, like you're already like thinking back to the good times i know i'm already <laughs> imagining guardians too let me <laughs> already. let me put it this way i almost left work in the afternoon today just to go see it again <laughs> <laughs> i was seriously i almost did not come back from lunch because <laughs> I, I work in mckee's rocks and and which is really close to Robinson Town Center, with, and there's the Robinson Cinemark right down the road. That was uh, it was tempting. I I don't think anyone would have blamed you. I don't think anyone would have blamed you. All right, let's ease into this because of the four questions, they're all pretty given amongst us. So I think let's just let's just jump into it. We all like the movie. I'm assuming. 
We yeah. all like the movie. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I, I want to I wanna throw this question out because this seems to be the question that has been going around everywhere. Where does this rank? As far as the Marvel movies? As far as the Marvel movies, excluding the X-Men and Spider-Man. Boy, we're, we're talking the Marvel Cineverse just, ones. Yeah, we're talking about Marvel, like Marvel Studios. Studios. Yeah. 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 The shared universe. Um, wow. Yep. Wow. I think I'd, I think I'd put it right below Avengers. I think I'm with Mike on that. I think as I'm, far as, as enjoyable, yeah. yes, absolutely. Second to Avengers, easily. Yep. Um, there was a great conversation that I listened to about just because of the humor in this movie, it made it just so much more likable. And that's probably what's also helping push the numbers. Uh huh. Because I knew nothing about these comic books was and i think that's a big point because i like like i said like i said before dan i went in cold i didn't watch like the only guardians of the galaxy i had going into this was a guest spot they did on either avengers or ultimate spider-man I re- oh yeah they were they were in avengers assemble or yeah. avengers or they're, 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 yeah. they're on both they're on both okay they've been Spider-Man. on both um and that is the only thing other than they popped in at the end of uh, I, I just started I got to the trial of Jean, Jean Grey stuff and all new X Men, so they popped up at the okay. end of something. Um, sure. And since, by the way, I've caught up to everything they have in Marvel Unlimited and in, the, in you know all twelve issues they have of the current run, including the point one that has a wildly different origin for uh, Star Lord. By the way, um, mm. <laughs> but, but I'm okay with it, and I think that's the thing. That's I think that's what like if you look at Blade, like I do remember the one guy in the Blade. That was kind of poo-pooing the movie because it wasn't like the book. Mm -hmm. But I think more people jumped on it because they weren't like, this isn't like the Spider-Man I remember. And I think that's what you the problem you have, especially with this latest round of Amazing Spider-Man. You know, I have my wife saying, I don't don't remember Gwen Stacy or or what's going on here, you know. Um, Mm -hmm. And I don't remember this way. Why why do we actually see his parents and stuff? It's like, well, there's actually a different version, da, 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 da. And it has so many iterations. And no matter who you are, it's not your iteration. This is the vast, vast, vast majority is going to be brand new first and i think right. it, it, more more than even like your captain american iron man's that you know have been seen more but not as big as your x-men spider-man's i right. i have a question for you guys if you take every first like superhero movie like the first iron man the first spider-man the first cap the first x-men i think this kind of ranks as the tops of those just because as an introductory movie as an intro, yeah, as an, like a non-sequel, basically, mm-hmm. because Avengers, for all intents and purposes, is a sequel of everything oh, that right. came before. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I think um, I'm, I'm actually going to say Iron Man is still probably like the best standalone Marvel movie. I mean, it, uh, ignoring the fact that it basically kicked off the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, I think that is probably still for me. Even Avengers and Guardians, that is still one of my top Marvel movies because mm-hmm. just of its rewatchability and taking a you know at the time was you know Iron Man was basically a second or third tier character um, and turning him into a household name. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't I'd agree with you except the fact that the Iron Monger like scenes at the end kind of fall flat on rewatch for me sometimes. I, yeah, I would agree with that, but yeah, the, I, and I think that's been, you know, um, that's been a problem actually. I think with all the Iron Man films, it's just the, the villains are not nearly as entertaining as Iron Man himself or his mm-hmm. supporting cast, but it, that's, it's almost, it's, it's almost like Iron Man doesn't need villains, you know, it, but we have to put them in here to make this movie work I, and it falls off. I think Justin Hammer came the closest of actually being as entertaining as Tony. I, I would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. And, and unfortunately, Sam Rockwell just didn't get enough screen time. But, you know, it's, it's I guess, how much, you know, how, how entertaining would just uh, like a, a another businessman be as far as like being the main villain? So it doesn't sell yeah. toys. Yeah, I, I, I want, him to, nope, I want nope. him to assemble the Masters of Evil, though. Like, I want at the end of. Avengers Age of Ultron, like you see Justin Hammer approaching people in the prison and say, let me oh, talk to cool. you guys about the Hammer Initiative. I want I, I want a Justin Hammer figure where he dances. <laughs> well, all right, hold, hold <laughs> on. If we're going to get into Marvel figures, we want dancing. 
I think Guardians Uh-oh. has one that's going to offer. I'm just, Good I'm point. just throwing that out there. Good point. Good point. <laughs> well, Which I did not see that. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Nope. That's true. I definitely think the character actors, though, just in general, I think that's one of the reasons why I'll agree with Dan that Iron Man, I think Iron Man had a really good uh, like character-driven story mm-hmm. and origin story. Nobody has superpowers. Is, yeah. that, is that the only one where nobody in the film has superpowers? For in Iron Man? Yeah. Like, I mean, is, is Iron Man the only film where, they, where people don't have superpowers? There are people yeah. in technology, and that's yeah, about it. Um, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. 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 I mean, you do get extremists towards the end there, but again, mostly technology. So, mm-hmm. and and actually, if you think about it, same with Guardians. None of them have any. I mean, you have. I mean, they're aliens, but I think I mean, Groot yeah, is really the only still... one that ha- ha- exhibits any kind. You know, he, he's got his growing ability and his, but that's his body. I mean, that's just him. Yeah. Um, but everyone in Guardians is just a normal, you know, for their race or species, just a normal, average being. Well, I'm technically the same could be said of Thor. Because if you look at the Asgardians okay. as aliens, okay. mm-hmm. they're kind of the same thing. Yeah. They're just they're just incredibly skilled fighters. I mean, that's... Pr- like, mm-hmm. Cap is really the only one with legitimate lab-created superpowers. Mm-hmm. And, and Hulk. And Hulk, and Hulk yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah um, every, everyone else is just, like, normal for their race. One thing I was gonna I was gonna jump back to real quick before we got too far is when you were talking about the the likability of the movie. I think another thing that really s- just drove that home was the soundtrack. I think that really grounded mm-hmm, definitely that, mm-hmm. ground, that grounded the movie and it made it made it very accessible and it made it more fun. I mean, because the the soundtrack was so perfect for you know all the scenes that I, I mean it just you know we. I think the, the the next day the the comic book store I work at we had the soundtrack playing. I think we played it probably five or six times in a row. The soundtrack is just kind of like audible soul food. Like it's just mm-hmm. very soothing because even though you're in a galaxy that's completely far away, you don't know any of these characters' backstories. They're jamming to songs that you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Like songs like, that you grew up with. Well, this is yeah. a great there's, job. There's a lot in this. There's a lot of nostalgia there. There's yeah. actually there's an article um, that I, I read yesterday uh, from io9. Watching Guardians of the Galaxy is like getting part getting back part of your soul. <laughs> oh, I, I, I read that as well. Yeah, that was a good article. But uh, but it, the, exactly like it was uh, the the most humorous. Like I can't remember last time I was at a movie where where everybody was laughing. Yep. Not re- like and yep. I think and again to that like nobody's read this and everybody's like okay Marvel okay we know what they've done with these things but I think like on top of that this is just like another space movie to most people you know mm-hmm. with enough hooks that got people interested. Being with the soundtrack, I mean the the soundtrack was I was worried the soundtrack for the trailers wasn't going to translate and it, but it was completely it was and over the entire thing I, it, it was the fu- it was the funniest movie of the year for me so far yeah oh I mean, yeah. So i've that, seen a lot of funny mm-hmm. movies mm-hmm. they set the bar up high like right away not only did they hit you with the soundtrack but even chris pratt right right off the bat like he's kicking little uh like dinosaur looking things <laughs> yeah. while he's dancing going through like this completely he's, barren landscape yeah. he's pulling a risky business just singing to himself well, you know yeah, i, I mean saying, that's it's great and that's, he's using an alien slug as a microphone i mean that is <laughs> like that sets the tone more than anything else in this movie it's like oh, okay it's gonna be like this that's yeah. fine. well and, and and not only does the soundtrack you know ground the movie but it really it practically defines the character of Peter Quill because that is one of his few ties to Earth, mm-hmm. um, and it, and and that's you know it's it's all about pop culture. I mean, he makes so many pop culture references yes. that it really it really helps define the character. And again, it makes it more uh, accessible to people that have no idea who Peter Quill is or who Star Lord is or anything like that. It's the guy from Parks and Rec. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're yeah. like, yeah, I mean, you're like, when did he get fit? You know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, I took I, I took my my girlfriend and my sister to this, and I mean, they've seen Iron Man and you know Avengers, but they don't read comics. But they both came out loving this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. 
which makes total sense. I saw it the second time and I went with friends who hadn't seen it yet. And I was waiting to see if they would laugh at the parts that I was still laughing at. And they were cracking right. up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like such a likable. And like, it almost like justified, like, yes, that was funny. And now these people who have not seen the movie also agree that it's just hilariously funny. So this is an amazing mm-hmm. movie. Um, jumping on to that, speaking of the comedy of the characters, did you guys have a favorite character? Because I think I had a definite well, favorite. I, 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 think, I, think, I think if we're going to talk about our favorite characters, we should probably go spoiler. Yeah. Like, spoilery. To, all right. Yeah, we can go spoiler. Okay. All right. You are entering another dimension. A dimension <laughs> of sight and sound. A dimension where Marvel movies can now include jokes about semen and dick pics. Whoa, 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 <laughs> this whoa, 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 is the spoiler zone. So. All true. What did I get myself into? <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it on this side of the podcasting alley. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, I would like to tip my invisible hat to Bradley Cooper, who did not yes. even sound like freaking Bradley Cooper. Throughout this whole freaking movie, well, okay, yeah. okay. Well, okay. can I add on to that? Can I add on to that? You, you I know you you listen to the same podcast I do. Did you hear the "What's Better, Rocket Raccoon or Caesar from the latest uh, uh, Planet of the Apes movie?" Oh, right. what, is, what is the better? We yeah, we talked about this on the Hangout last night, but it, let's go around like between them. Like, well, what's more saying... believable? What's the more the 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 bigger accomplishment uh, this summer? Oh, the summer? Well, but that's so technical. Between Caesar and Rocket Raccoon, which one blew you away? As in, I, I too will believe that a raccoon will have a murderous, murderous rampage. Especially one who doesn't know he's a raccoon. <laughs> I don't feel like I can justify, like justifiably answer that. Because, yeah. Oh, the, I know you saw both of them, so yeah, I have I can't say that. The anything. gorillas <laughs> were incredibly realistic. <laughs> but and if if I saw a raccoon with a gun coming out of my trash, as we've seen them back here, but not with the gun <laughs> part, um, I believe that's what it would look at look like. If he started speaking to you as Rocket <laughs> raccoon or bradley cooper speaking as then i would freaking believe it <laughs> like oh my god um well, hilarious I can just say that, that that is not the bradley cooper i expected to hear and it it, it I mean i knew it was him going in but it, it did not sound at all like bradley cooper yeah. yeah if you if you didn't tell me who voiced rocket raccoon i'd never be able to guess no i'd uh, never be able to guess it yeah not in a million years yeah, but I, I, I gotta say, my favorite character, I, I gotta give it up to Dave Batista, Drax the Destroyer. That <laughs> the personification I, of Drax, <laughs> ultimate straight man in the movie, because he takes everything super literally. Yeah. Was like I've been saying Drax's lines ever since I saw it on Friday. <laughs> like nothing gets over my head. I, my reflexes are too good. I would catch it. And yeah. I don't know. I don't Perfect. know. It's like, can we call that Batista awesome. a great actor or just the material he was handed? I, oh, I don't, I don't know where to put that. Or like, 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 I, I mean, did hear that when he got the part that isn't it true that he right away, he went out and started taking all kinds of acting classes and nice. like really dove in, dove into the role. I'm sure he, I'm sure he probably did. I mean, I, I don't know. I, don't remember reading that at all but he's been trying to do acting for a little while now in between bits of mma and wrestling but i was i was completely i mean i was i'll say it i was impressed i was downright impressed with his performance not really knowing anything about him or seeing anything else that he's been in or you know Mm -hmm. any of his wrestling or anything like that yeah um i thought he was great i i guess for me i can narrow it down by just saying who am i if i had to pick the least favorite one of the main cast it would be gamora yeah but i still i still enjoyed you know her character but just not as much as the other characters well i, I mean she, i don't think i could i don't think i could pick a favorite it's like if you watch star wars everyone's going to gravitate to han luke or chewy and forget about leia even though leia is awesome well not only that but i mean everybody had their moment to shine there was no one that got you know, I, I feel like there wasn't anyone that was just kind of almost in the background. I mean, everybody had great moments in this movie. That is mm-hmm. true. 
Um, Even yeah. uh, Josh Brolin. Oh, yeah. yes. Nailed it. I got to see Thanos. Nailed it. That was so good. Like, I don't care if he was only on for five minutes. That would. It, it made me excited for Avengers 3. I don't know how that's possible, but <laughs> it made me excited for a movie that's not coming out until I'm 35. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> well, wow. I, I, knew we were gonna, I knew that we were going to see him, but I didn't know to what extent. And I, I actually, I feel like we got to see a lot more of him than at least I expected. You know, you get to see him full body sitting in his throne. Um, and he talked i mean he actually you know i figured maybe he'd say one or two words um but he you know he he had a i mean not a substantial role but but there was you know it was because of him it was you know that it was kind of the um the the impetus for the plot so to Mm -hmm. speak how about like going into this i realized we had no idea who the bad guy was right um, well, I, I knew who it was. Well, I didn't know from teasers, etc. Yeah. You expected something like like the only hints you got if you watch the movies is uh, the collector and you, you figure Thanos is going to be in play. Right. Um, mm-hmm. The Redeemer uh, or I'm sorry. Like, what was his name? The Accuser. The, the, the accuser, accuser. I'm sorry. The Ron, Accuser, Ron, which, Ron, again, accuser. somebody I know from the cartoon. And uh, maybe I read a book or two maybe uh, uh, with him. Uh, great, great bad guy for this one. Oh yeah, I did. Think yeah, towards he was definitely... the end. I thought towards the end he became a little comical. <laughs> yes, but I, that's when well, the rest I mean, of the, that's when the rest of the movie infected his character. Yeah, when when you're yeah. tr- when you're trying to destroy an entire planet and then you're suddenly challenged to a dance off, <laughs> you don't really have a choice but to become a little bit comical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I, I just thought it was just some really great, like scene chewing moments, and he it was like he was twisting his like a virtual mustache and like i mean he was he was just he was just really villainous i thought he was a really strong uh villain for this movie and i uh uh karen gillen as nebula was pretty great like yes she yeah. she was a very good evil lackey and mm-hmm. she escaped yeah mm-hmm. uh, spoiler she sorry me- <laughs> she's, she's well we're in that zone she's star screen oh that's right yeah that's what? right she star screamed it. Yeah. So like uh, I, I really enjoyed her. I mean, we didn't get any backstory about her other than that. She was Thanos's daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that like no, no explanation is given like how she could apparently regenerate her limbs and like crack back into shape. But we didn't care because it was just we knew, really well done. We knew she was an Android type thing. There was a great shot uh, when he was talking to Thanos about you know, the, the, you know, when, when she was like working on her arm, you know, I thought it was a really interesting character moment, you know, it was like, okay, you know, she's literally stitched together. So let's see what, what happens with this. I messed up. I thought it was Rachel Lee Cook the whole time. Until somebody pointed out to me. I I don't like, that was my guess. Oh no, that's Amy Pond. That's oh, I know. Amelia. I know. Like, like the last fight, like Missy leans over is like, man, the doctor's, uh, you know, blah, you know, blah, 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 is, is really kicking ass. I'm like, oh, shit, that's who that is. You know, I, one of those <laughs> moments. But uh, so much makeup. Come that. on. What's that? Yeah, I didn't. Catch oh, you didn't even catch her. that. No. Well, and she's not really sporting much of an accent in this one either. No. So, yeah, that's true. OK, but. what did you guys think of uh, Merle Dixon in space? Oh, Jesus. Oh! Space Merle. So good. <laughs> The people are calling him the Walking Dead, and that was fantastic. People basically are calling him Space Merle. I love that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so great. he's basically. It's. I mean, if I would have one complaint, and it's not even a complaint, it's just more of a funny, just aside. It's just like um, Yondu, Michael Rooker's Yondu was just Michael Rooker being Michael Rooker <laughs> <laughs> in blue paint with and blue paint and, yeah. a, and a red mohawk that lit up whenever he whistled his arrow around. Yeah. But wait, I'm glad. I'm really glad we got that, you know, it was teased, it was teased and we did get the one shot of seeing just how badass this guy is. Yes, mm-hmm. I like, agree. Like there was a yeah, lot of just down the whole fleet. Moments of justification of badass them. The accuser got it, Drax got it, hell the raccoon got it, Groot got it, you know, uh, it was just mm-hmm. like you know, great justifications for each of their characters. Again, like you were saying, Dan, everybody got their moment in the sun. Yep. And it's it, it was fantastic. So yeah, yeah. it was beautiful. <laughs> and I gotta give props uh for the Nova Corps for Glenn Close and John C. Riley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're fantastic. Like 
And for Glenn Close to take that small of a role, <laughs> she must have really liked the well, material. I think I really think at this point, like getting into a Marvel movie is like getting into the old oh. Batman series. Yeah, seriously. they're like, like no, please them. let me. Like people are knocking down the doors. Like, can I be something? I've never heard of that character. I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. like I yeah. really think that's they're just at that justifiable point now. Well, well, plus I, 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 I always think whenever I see like these these great actors and actresses in these movies, I always think about when um. Uh, Robert De Niro was in the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. He, <laughs> he, he he did that for his children. And I think that's what a lot of these, like, um, uh, what's his name? Um, who was in the movie? Uh, De, uh, Demon, uh, ha- I can never say his name. Jamon Hansu. Or, uh, he was in the very beginning. When, um, the, uh, when, when he, ca- he was going after Peter Quill in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And oh, he... Okay. He he wanted to be in this movie for his kids. So I think you're seeing a lot of actors recognizing that, you know, kids, especially their own kids, are like into this stuff, and they want to they want to be a part of this like pop culture zeitgeist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I I was listening to an interview with uh, Patrick Stewart. That was the reason he took the Charles Xavier role. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. you know. I think before we do have to bring up the uh, the end credit scene. Well, well, uh, I guess first the pre credit scene. Everybody wants a group uh, dancing uh, dancing house plant now, right? Oh, I mean, yes, I mean, yes. are those out yet? It, um, and it, can I buy it's it? It's on. It's on Etsy. It's on Etsy, of course. Someone, it is. yeah, someone, someone's already making them and selling them on Etsy. I saw it today. Yeah, I did yeah. see that. I, I, I need one. I need one. Yeah, that was that was just first article. Where can I buy? <laughs> <laughs> Where can I buy Baby Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy? Yep. Fantastic. First thing. Like, wow. and I love how the biggest promotional product that they could think of is, A, not only a huge spoiler, but Marvel hasn't even made one yet. Like, mm. <laughs> Wow. Like, how do they not already have that, like, as a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive? Yes. Yeah, how was that not a thing? I'm well, Groot. like you said, it probably would have been a, a potential spoiler, maybe. Yeah, I guess uh, if you don't know about Groot. Then yeah, you know, if they don't understand why you're. Why do you have a character in a in a pot? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't actually. I don't think it would have been a spoiler. I think people have just been like, oh, okay, that's cute. Yeah, it probably wouldn't make sense until after they saw the movie. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And yeah. but of course, the post credits. Howard the Duck. What the hell? It was ducking fantastic, yeah. <laughs> And there's all these, are we going to get a Howard the Duck movie? Maybe. Maybe. There was a conspiracy theory I read about how Disney conveniently bought LucasArts and Marvel around the same time. Oh, and Lucas, Lucasfilm really? potentially might have still owned some of the film rights, screen rights to Howard the Duck. I just want to see Howard the Duck in DuckTales. <laughs> well, well, according to, to James Gunn, it was put in there just strictly for entertainment purposes only that according to him but you know right, how but, things change but uh the real like the thing people might not have noticed about that end credit scene is when you're first in the collectors i think it was at the thor the dark world scene they had the cocoon for adam warlock yeah that was and, yeah that was pointed out and in the background of the howard the duck scene the cocoon is broken open oh no Ooh. so that's another way they could go that's awesome. Yeah, I I'll bet that would that. be probably good a uh, good story material for the sequel. There you go. Uh, I well, they've also said that the sequel might involve some Avengers. Uh, I'm hoping we get cosmic suits to Tony Stark. Well, Mike, you had mentioned something about us wrapping this whole series up with Avengers, the third one. Do you still f- see it going that way? The way it's planned now, isn't it? Yeah, is it the, uh, at plan? Least the, the, the yeah, plan? I mean, the phase, the phase plan that they've announced so far goes out to Avengers three, and mm-hmm. the Thanos thread is going to go all the way out to Avengers three. We got our phase. We got to think about phase. Okay, break this down. Phase one. It was all about the Cosmic Cube, which was, and there's this thing called the Infinity Gauntlet, and there's five, six of them. Help me, Dan. Uh, yes, yeah, six Infinity Gems. When we've seen yeah. the blue one. In the Cosmic Cube, we saw the red one from Thor 2, and yep, yep. now this would be the third one, is this purple, purple one. one. Um, I'm not getting into the names, because who knows? Um, I forget. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> crappy with the Marvel Cosmic stuff. I don't think, they've even, I don't think they even named the one Guardians. They're, they're, they're not. It was Infinity Stone. 
yeah, they're, they're, they're not even, they're, they're being very vague with them. And I think that's probably on purpose because oh, yeah. they probably don't want to get too far into that. Until they figure it out completely. Until, until they actually, like, until it becomes purposeful. Yeah. Well, because yeah. the, the Tesseract reminded me of the Mind Gem. Because, like, Loki clearly used some of its powers to take over Hawkeye and, and I think that's, yeah, what I, I, that's what I always assumed it was. I, I think you're right. I think it was, like, post-Avengers I saw, <laughs> you know, something something about that, like mm-hmm. uh, the, the, a, a write-up where that was... You know, uh, you know there are people out there that are already cataloging what gems these are. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think that's definitely the the tesseract is definitely the mind gem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I want to make it's on the cosmic side. I say this to you, uh, Malengo, on Saturday when we watch the movie. Um, there's two things that I don't give two craps about when I'm reading Marvel comics, and every time it bleeds over to my X Men, Spider Man, I get pissed off. Asgard and anything cosmic. <laughs> <laughs> and I love both movie representations of Asgard and cosmic cosmic things with Guardians. I like the second one better than the first one, but that's just me. Yes. Well, <laughs> so, sort just to just to follow up on that, and this is a general statement uh, because I was always very like anti Marvel cosmic until I read, and I don't know if we've already met, discussed this, but until I read the um annihilation event that marvel put out a few years ago okay um which i believe the whole event is collected on the marvel unlimited app Mm -hmm. but i would strongly advise anybody to read this this uh event this storyline it's this huge cosmic storyline and it's got the guardians it's got nova it's got warlock it is a it's like very it's like if whether you are fully versed in Marvel Cosmic or our complete newbie like I was, this is an awesome event. Nice. An awesome yeah. story. I think I want to read more of this latest affinity one that's crossed over into a lot of my books. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, I'll probably, I'll probably pick up some, like, I'm, I think I want to like step back, like, <laughs> like little by little, because I don't want to go like old guardians. Cause I'm probably going to hate it. And, uh, and, and maybe back through. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. So on that note, on that note, uh, let's let's wind it down. I guess we already talked about what we uh, what we're watching, mm-hmm. but um, overall, and, and just the quick roundup. I'm assuming the overall question of would we recommend this movie? Yeah, if, if I can see this movie again, I probably will definitely go see it. I'm looking up the pre order on Amazon now. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's it's worth it on IMAX. I want to worth it on IMAX. I want to camp out at the movie theater and have the people say, sir, it's already out. You don't have to camp out for the movie. I'm like, no, I, I just want to be here every morning when the theater opens so I can go see it. I just want to tell people who aren't going to see it to change their tickets and go see it. Yeah. yeah like who, who wasn't the James go Brown movie this? will be on the James Brown movie will be on HBO by Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it'll definitely. Be okay. <laughs> We're the smaller theaters. It'll be there forever. <laughs> they asked me what movie I wanted to see, and I almost responded, what el- other movie is playing? <laughs> Seriously. <Yeah. laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Oh, uh, geez. All right. Well, uh, Dan, where can we find you? Uh, well, I have my uh, my podcast, Comic Book Pit, which you could find on iTunes, or you just go to comicbookpit.com. That's pit with two T's. Nice. Uh, what about you, Mad Mike? Well, you can find me on the Twitters at Mad Mike four eight eight three, and I also represent the New York contingent of the Wrestling Mayhem Show on SorgatronMedia dot com. Very nice, Sorg. Uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitters, SorgatronMedia dot com for everything going on uh, digitally for me, I guess. You can find me at, on Twitter at Rambling Mango. We also have a facebook fan page no it's not a fan page it's a group page (laughs) uh we have a group page so definitely join that we like to throw up random questions trailers and discussions there also you could go to the site where i draw a most of the time a weekly comic strip on whatever movie just came out so i will be posting tonight the one from guardians of the galaxy so definitely stay tuned for that um if Spoiler, if you remember Star Fox, you might enjoy this. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm already excited for this. Star oh. Fox. 
Star Fox are, is the cosmic date rapist. Are you gonna have? <laughs> are you gonna have Rocket Raccoon screaming? Use the boost to chase. I'm not saying be anything. The best thing in the world. My lips are sealed. All right, oh with that, God. thanks, Dan, wait. for coming on the show. This is the Rambling Movie thanks, Minute. Guys. And uh, until next week, keep rambling. <laughs> <laughs>